Welcome to Augusta National Golf Club. Twelve months ago, Lee Trevino, one of the greats who's yet to win here, led after round one. But today, save for this great iron to the 18th, his magic deserted him. He would open with a disappointing 78. In Japan, 44-year-old Jumbo Ozaki is a living legend. The six-foot, 180-pound Ozaki is noted for his length off the tee. His iron play is pretty good, too. That'll be an eagle. Getting the ball to stop on Augusta National's slick greens is one thing, but putting with the same precision? Well, that's another, as Jumbo finds to his cost at the short 16th. Disappointment for Ozaki and the millions of Japanese watching their hero back home on TV. And a warning to all that Augusta National is unforgiving. Still, Ozaki would shoot a 70, two under par. Pre-tournament favorite Greg Norman is looking forward to the challenge. I mean, I've uh, probably done more practice leading up to this one than I have before. The golf course is in great condition, more grass on the fairways and the greens are perfect, so uh, uh, it just feels different to me this year. It's a given fact. The Australian rarely starts well, and this year is no exception. But sadly for Greg and the gallery, Norman's game is badly out of touch. A first round 78 followed by a 72 means he'll miss the cut for the first time in 10 visits. 1988 Masters runner-up Mark Kalkovecchia is the leading American contender. But just like Norman before him, he finds the creek in front of the 13th. But with help from his caddy, wife Cheryl, he would recover and finish in the top 20. Cheryl is one of two female caddies here this year. Fanny Sunison from Sweden is the other. Fanny is tending Nick Faldo, and together they record an opening 71. That's one under par. Another with a 71, United States amateur champion Chris Patton. The 300-pound senior from Clemson University made headlines earlier in the week when he shot 65 in his first practice round. One of 22 Masters freshmen, he easily makes the final stages. Playing in his first Masters, Bill Britton is making waves, big waves. His wedge to the 14th is the shot of the day. That eagle would help him to a round of 68. Yet another Masters newcomer is Floridian John Houston, recent first-time winner on the circuit. He shoots two 33s for an opening round of 66. But that would be overshadowed by Mike Donald, Donald, a 34-year-old journeyman pro from Hollywood, Florida, led the rookie rampage with an 8-under 64, which included a chip-in birdie and 10 single putts. His 64 ties Lloyd Mangrum's 50-year-old record for lowest first round by a first-time player. Arnold Palmer won't be winning the title this year, but it's great to see him back. For 36 consecutive years, he has come to Augusta and assumed command of Arnie's army. They enjoyed that. But the charismatic four-time champion will regrettably miss the cut. Jack Nicholas, though, is on the prowl. Armed with a new driver and attitude, the 50-year-old six-time champion poses a serious threat. Another player armed with a new weapon of sorts is 84 champion Ben Crenshaw. Last month, his prized putter, nicknamed Little Ben, was kidnapped. Happily, it's been recovered. Ben can smile again. And why not with shots like that? The West German, Bernhard Langer, winner in 85, reminds us of the strength of the European challenge. There are eight competing Europeans this year, and remember, Europeans took the title five times during the 80s. Seve Ballesteros won two of those victories, 
And despite opening rounds of 74 and 73, he remains a constant danger. 1976 champion Ray Floyd finds his game peaking at the right time. Opening with a 70, the 47-year-old is one under for the day, as this par putt on the 11th hole refuses to drop. Well, what a stroke of luck for the captain of last year's United States Ryder Cup team. Three birdies on the back nine help him to a 68 and a two round total of 138. At the halfway point, Raymond Floyd leads Scott Hope by one with defending champion Nick Faldo among a group five strokes back. Jose Maria Alapabal would please the Spanish press with a third round 68 that would leave him at day's end, tied in seventh place. But today, most European eyes are on Nick Faldo, who is beginning to turn on the style. With a 33 on the front side and that birdie on 10, the Englishman suddenly tying for the lead at five under. He's level with another, making an assault on par, John Houston. By the turn, the third-year pro has snatched a one-stroke lead. That's how they stand, as we review the action with my colleague, Bill Fleming. Thanks, Chris. Our defending champion, Nick Faldo, continues to be aggressive. He's going with a one-iron for his second shot on the par 5 13th. And it looks pretty impressive. Oh, it's a fine shot right in the middle of the green, leaving Nick 35 feet short of the hole for his eagle try. Back at the 10th hole, Houston has a chance to increase his lead from 20 feet all downhill. Fantastic putt for another birdie for Houston. That puts him at seven under par and a two-shot lead. What a great tournament he's having in his very first Masters. Ahead at 13, Faldo has this 35-footer for Eagle. And he gives it a pretty good wrap. Just a little bit short for the Eagle, but close enough to make birdie. That would put him one stroke behind Houston in second place. Back at the par 4 10th, the second shot of Ray Floyd with a 6-iron. Ray didn't play too well on the front side, shooting one over par 37, but look at this shot right at the flag. Oh, a splendid shot. Quickly ahead at the 11th, John Houston has this 60-footer for birdie, and you have to believe he's just thinking to two-putt from here. Or is he? Look at that, four birdies in a row for John, and he increases his lead back to two again. At 10, Raymond has studied this putt. Not much of a break in it. And he puts it dead center to go six under, two strokes off the lead in third place. Far ahead of the drama, Chris Patton's already a winner. The only amateur to survive the cut. He'll receive low amateur honors at the end of the tournament. At the 12th, Scott Hoke. But after the promise of yesterday, he finds himself losing ground on the Floyds, the Faldos, and the Houstons. A brilliant shot here at the par three, but by tonight, he'll be six shots back and too far away to challenge. Well, not so for Nick Faldo. He has this for his sixth birdie of the day to go seven under par. the touch on 12 Floyd with a 25 footer for birdie and he's got that look of determination in his eyes yeah. 
And he's got it. He's just one back of John Houston along with Nick Faldo. And now let's look at Jack Nicklaus, another player who's slowly moving up the leaderboard. The Golden Bear is three under. Five back of Houston playing his second shot on 14. Little knockdown six iron. And what a golf shot he's played on this hole. In a perfect position to make birdie on the most undulating green at Augusta. Forward to 18 again. This time with Curtis Strange. And he must feel like he's on a roller coaster today. He started out one under. And once got to four under. But his round of 71, which includes five birdies, two bogeys, and a double bogey, is too inconsistent for Augusta National. Never mind, Curtis. You're two under, and there are 18 more holes tomorrow. Here at 14, Nicholas has about a 10-footer straight down the hill. No one knows these greens better than this man here. He's won more than any other player in history at Augusta, and he's got another bird. That moves him to within four of Houston, who leads Faldo and Floyd by one. While Nicholas and company wrestled for the top spot, Jumbo Ozaki has fallen by the wayside. A 77 has dashed his hopes of a green jacket. Meanwhile, our leader, John Houston, is on a run of pars. So too is Nick Faldo. At the 17th, Nick's playing companion, Bernhard Longer, has this to go four under par. And he's not out of it yet. And not to be outdone, Floyd shows he has a trick or two up his sleeve. Another birdie. That ties Houston at eight under, on top of the pack. It seems like the old gray beards of golf have awakened because the Golden Bear is moving sweetly, too. And with another birdie, he closes to within three of Floyd and John Houston. On the same par 5, 15th, Floyd has an 85-yard shot over the water. This is his third shot, a delicate wedge. Difficult because the pin is set just 18 to 20 feet from the front edge of the green, and he has hit a beauty. Not more than 10 feet from the hole. Ahead to the 18th, Faldo still seven under, some 180 yards away. Coming up the hill with the pin in the front, it's better to play it long and hope the slope carries the ball back. Looks like it's a little bit low and it runs through the green, leaving him what looks to be <laughs> when it stops more than 70, maybe 80 feet downhill. Not much chance for birdie here. Back to Floyd at 15 for his birdie attempt to take the lead. Plays it perfectly. When you walk at the ball like he did, you almost know it's going in. We have a new leader, Ray Floyd, nine under. And Nick Faldo can't afford to let up. The defending champion for birdie. Right now, from this position, he'd love to get it down in two. Now he hit it a bit too hard. And that runs a good 10 to 12 feet past the hole. And after all the good work today, Nick is in danger of dropping a shot. Now back to the leader, 1976 Masters champion, 47-year-old Raymond Floyd on the 16th hole. It's dead calm right now, and he has a five iron. Mm, looks awfully good from the tee. Not, not quite far enough, and I'm afraid it's going to roll. <laughs> you can tell Raymond's been here before. Back to 18, where Faldo has this 12-footer to try and complete a flawless round of golf. He's had six birdies and 11 pars so far.
Oh, what a courageous putt. Giving Faldo a 66 for the day, seven under for the tournament, and only two behind Floyd. And now back to Floyd at 16 for his birdie try. Another birdie for Raymond Floyd. That is four birdies in the last five holes, and he now holds a two-stroke advantage over John Houston. No wonder they are standing and applauding Raymond Floyd. Now having his troubles at 18, Nicholas is faced with this 11-footer for par. Very delicate putt. And right in the center of the hole. So with that, the Golden Bears shoot 69 today and is five under par for the tournament. Just five back of Ray Floyd. The first two days, I really played pretty well and didn't get much out of it. Today, I didn't play nearly as well as I did the first two days, but I made the putts that I needed to make at, at that time. Now, tomorrow, I've got to put all of it together. I've got to be able to hit the ball well and make the putts, too. So, but it was, uh, I'm, I'm in good position. I played well, and uh, I certainly can't be unhappy with 69. Be sure John Houston's a happy man, and why not? His 68 means the Masters freshman will play in the final pairing tomorrow, and his companion will be, as today, Ray Floyd. Playing like a man rejuvenated, Raymond is two putts away from an inward 31. He has that look in his eye, and who knows, at 47, he could well become the oldest Masters champion. Chris Patton is certainly relaxed, though no dream finish for him of charging through Amen Corner in chase of the leaders. He has stamped his personality on his first Masters. I'm sure we'll be seeing him again. Through the turn and striding forward, Fred Couples has moved to three under, along with Lanny Watkins. The Golden Bear growls momentarily. But back-to-back -back bogeys will stun his progress. And Faldo, well, it could be worse. A double bogey on the opening hole put him five back of Floyd. But birdies at two and seven have eased the pain. He's back as he started at seven under par. But as you can see, Floyd has dropped a stroke. He bogeyed the fifth. His lead is down to two. And Floyd is now at the par five eighth hole, Chris. He's been using a new metal driver all week, and he's pumped this one out in good shape for his second shot. It's a metal driver with a graphite shaft given to him by Jumbo Ozaki, the same kind that he gave Jack Nicholas, and Nicholas has been using it well all week. And this is a fine shot by Raymond on the green in two. A chance for Eagle at eight. Now let's join Faldo at the ninth. Nine was, was playing quite difficult, and I was stood there with an A time in my hand for a long time and nearly ready to go. And I looked and I thought, oh, I've got to hit this up to 100%. And so I went back to a seven. I thought, well, I'll, I'll just try and move, even off, off that down slope, I'd try and move the ball forward as far as I could to get the thing up to make it stop. Faldo still seven under. I actually hit a very solid seven iron and the, and the wind picked up then. And I mean, it only just made it, just crept over. And you know, to be, leave an uphill putt on that, on that hole is uh, you know, quite something in that position. And now Floyd at eight, an attempt at eagle. Looks awfully good, just slides by on the left. Very fine attempt, but he should have that for birdie. At the eighth hole. Now, Faldo to go eight under. And he does. Floyd, however, has also birdied at eight, ten under, so Faldo is still two behind Raymond. Now at the short twelfth, Gary Player, although not in contention, is even par for the tournament. And he still has that touch on the greens. The touch that has brought him two previous green jackets, he was the first overseas player to win the Masters tournament. 
Nick Faldo now on the 10th, second shot on this par four. I tried to hit a four iron. I, oh, I made a very fast swing on that one. I was trying to sort of flash it up there. And uh, that didn't come off. Hit it in the bunker right and left myself a long bunker shot. I mean, it's a tough bunker shot to, to judge because that green is so fast. Up ahead of Faldo's troubles is Fred Couples moving quietly along at the lovely 15th. This is his second shot going for the green on this par five. He's four under. Oh, it's a beauty. And that sets up Eagle for him. Now Faldo back at the 10th trying to save par. His third shot. Comes up a bit short. That's going to be a tricky one. The worst distance I find is when you're sort of six to ten feet and you're thinking, well, I should be birdieing this. Here I am, this close to the hole. You know, you're even still looking probably a two putt in for your bogey. Well, he's analyzed it pretty well. He's 20 feet away for the par. Oh, so close. That will drop him back to seven under and three behind Raymond with only eight holes to play for this defending champion. Fred Couples now, eagle try at 15, which would drop him to six under. And he rams it right in the cup. So if he pars out, he'd have 67 today. The question is, has he mounted his challenge too late? The answer is, he has. At the very next hole, a short 16th, Fred comes uncoupled and finds Sam. A bogey here and another at 17 ends his title hopes. Here's someone firmly in the hunt, for a minor place anyway. Lanny Watkins. He's found water five times on five separate holes this week, yet he's still four under, thanks to some magical putting. Through 69 holes, he's not three-putted once. Lanny for birdie. To go five under with two holes to play. Meanwhile, a front nine of 40 has crushed John Houston's chances. Raymond Floyd has this birdie opportunity at 11 to increase his lead to four. Still 10 under. Mm, so close. Well, all week long, Ray has been the picture of composure, making very few mistakes. And he said he's just having fun out here. Here's a guy who isn't having too much fun at 12, Faldo in the bunker. I had a good solid 7-9. I plugged it in the back trap. I mean, that is just, uh, yeah, I, I managed to sort of stay calm you know, the, on that. But I was looking at it thinking, God, I can hit a career bunker shot here and still hit it in the water. And... Um, and I thought, well, come on, you know what to do. Just try to hit the softest little bump on the back of it. So if I just get it out, it will be good. Well, it's out. And at least it's dry. You know, strangely enough, this 12th hole, 155 yards, has been the most difficult hole for the players all week long. Now Jackie Nicholas watching his father, who desperately needs a birdie here. He's four under. He's got to get back into contention. And he does it, as he's done so many times before. And so he is five under. And the crowd loves it. And loves him. That's the right kind of putt. Yes, and Nick Faldo needs the right kind of par putt here. This for par. Ray Floyd watching on the 12th tee. It got to within half an inch of the hole, so I shouted at it. I think the shot moved it into the hole, so I was, you know, delighted with that. <laughs> if you can shout at your ball, you're going to have a lot of golfers yelling uh, throughout the course of this next year. What a great putt by Faldo. Still seven under. I said to Jack when we went to the next tee, I said, oh, 
I'm glad we don't play that hole every day of the week. I mean, we'd be very old men very quickly. <laughs> Unexpected pleasure. Certainly was. Well, Ray Floyd is hoping yeah. for just such a pleasure as he gets ready to tee off on one of the most dangerous shots in golf, the tee shot at number 12. Still 10 under. He has a three shot lead, remember. And it's just over the back. Should be able to get down in two from there. And now at the 72nd hole, Lanny Watkins has another putt for birdie to get him to six under. Not quite, but he will be the leader in the clubhouse at 283, five under for the tournament. This is the best Masters finish ever for Lanny, and it is his 18th try. <laughs> Former U.S. Amateur Champion and PGA Champion. And now back to 12 for Floyd's attempt at a birdie. This could really be the clincher. And in it goes. Raymond's lead is now four over Faldo, and it looks very unlikely that anyone can catch him. And no doubt Faldo has heard that cheer. He's at the par 5, 13th. He has to be thinking eagle at this point. Hitting a four iron. And it's on the green. You bet he's thinking eagle. But Ray's in charge. He's awfully solid. The only thing that's bowled Raymond the last few years has been the driver. And, uh... You know, quite honestly, I think that getting past 12 with a birdie, you know, just birdie 12, I understand. Uh, uh, I'll be surprised if he falters coming in. Raymond's awfully solid. Faldo still has six holes to play, and Eagle could close the gap to two. I thought I had a very good putt. It was with two feet to go. It was still on the left edge and going to break to the right. And, and two feet later, I nearly missed it by two feet. It just went off sideways. Well, the subtleties of the greens here are really unbelievable. Now... Nicholas for Eagle. Jack had a 69 in the third round, just as he did in 86 when he won. But he told me last night, I'm going to need 65 today, just like I did then in order to win. And he's not going to have it. Nevertheless, he's played brilliantly. Watching comfortably, I believe, from the fairway is Ray Floyd playing in the last twosome. Nicholas for birdie. And with that, Jack is six under, and you certainly cannot count him out. Faldo to go eight under. And he does. With that birdie, he closes the gap to three with five holes to play. So while three Masters champions are locked in battle on the course, at the 18th, two others are just completing their rounds, Player and Ballesteros. Seve's finish, 2-under, 286. Gary, a 3-over par, 291. Both out of it this year, but what great ambassadors they are for the game of golf. So is this man, but sadly, that's a bogey for Jack at 14. And that must end his chance of a seventh title this year. Minutes later, at the same hole, Floyd has this to move further ahead. That would surely have clinched it. But with just four holes left, he still leads by three from Faldo and six from Watkins in the clubhouse. Surely he can't falter now. I had 218 to the front of the green and 34 to the hole. And as you imagine, that late in the tournament like that, you know, it's a real nerve end shot. So I stood over that two iron and just belted it, you know, as hard as I could and flew the thing all the way to the hole. And went off the back of the green, but I thought, well, that's all right. You know, at least I've been there before. And hopefully we can, you know, we could hit a good chip. And the way I actually was thinking, God, oh, come on, if I could chip it in, get a three out of this hole, that would really would be, a, you know, make a major move. The power of positive thinking. Can he hold this? Nope. And he has left himself short. Still a good size putt for birdie. And so Faldo, whose best Masters finish prior to his victory last year was in 1984, when he tied for 15th with, among others, Ray Floyd, has this one for any chance of beating Floyd this year. He's done it. Two behind with three holes to play. 
I'm starting to think I'm really in in this event now. And come on, you know, birdie this, birdie the next, that sort of thing. And uh, you know, you're going to be right back in there and, and put a lot of pressure on me. Floyd, with his third at the 15th, he laid up. Spin over. Even though Raymond is playing conservatively, he still keeps the pressure on, and an outside birdie chance here. Faldo on the 16th tee, a make or break hole now for the defending Masters champion. They always put the pin back left for, you know, for the last day. And you know, the, the one shot you want to hit is get it below the hole. For a split second when it landed, it looked like it was right on the edge of the bank you know, from where I was standing. But when I got up there, it was getting better all the time. And meanwhile, some 100 yards away, Ray Floyd has this to widen his lead. And what a beautiful setting. With all the spectators around the green as Raymond is trying to become the first player ever to win a major championship in four separate decades. Good stroke. And I think he thought he made it. Nevertheless, he maintains a two-stroke advantage over Faldo. Raymond won the PGA in 69, the Masters in 76, the U.S. Open in 86, and hopes to win the Masters in 90. At 16, Faldo for birdie. The putt had about a put a break and you know you start thinking to yourself well, if you're gonna do something now you just got to make this and it's in Faldo's relentless pursuit continues he has now one back with two holes left Ray Floyd at the 16th tee he knows what has happened ahead? Solid hit. A little to the right. But safely on, not within what you could call easy birdie distance. He seems satisfied, however. Quickly ahead to the final green where two U.S. Open champions, Curtis Strange and Tom Watson, have just finished tied at two under par. Watson has won here twice. Will Strange ever don the green jacket? Not this year for the two-time U.S. Open champion. Now back to Floyd at 16. This is really the time where all of the experience and discipline as a competitor comes to the fore. Look at the break in this putt. Oh. An absolutely extraordinary putt by Raymond Floyd. Yes, Ray, you deserve a hand. And now Houston will try for birdie. On the back, he double bogeyed 10 and then birdied 15. He has this for birdie. And he makes it. Drops him to four under for the tournament. Pretty good for this 28-year-old's first Masters. Now Ray Floyd. A tap in for his par. To maintain his one-stroke advantage with two holes to play. And that was simply a phenomenal putt that he made here. Faldo parred 17 and is now driving off 18. And it must be deja vu for him. Last year, he was four strokes back going into the last six holes and got a tie. Now he's one back and in good shape. Nicholas, final drive. Unfortunately, Jack bogeyed both 16 and 17 to fall back to three under and is out of contention. Floyd second at 17. And he's thinking, should I be aggressive or play it safe? Protecting a one-stroke lead. Nine iron from 135 yards out, and he's pulled it. And it goes down that ridge, keeps on sliding, and he's going to wind up about 70 feet away, and he has to putt up and over the ridge. It will not be easy to make par. Now Faldo second at 18. So I actually thought the pin would be on the front. So uh, you know when I then discovered it was on the back, you know, an extra almost 20 yards. Uh, I thought it was a long shot, you know, 185 up the hill. It's great in a situation like that where you've got no indecision. It's uphill, 185, slightly into the breeze, four iron, boom. Not a bad 
good shot. Comes up. Runs back onto the fringe. He'll be about 25 feet away from the hole. Now, Floyd has a putt that in some ways may be more difficult than the putt he had at 16 because it goes up the hill and then picks up speed as it comes down the hill. And it comes. Mm. Very close. Slides about eight feet past the cup. And you can see the tension in Floyd's face. Nicholas now, second shot at 18 from 175 yards out. And like Faldo, it's a little bit long, running to the back of the green. For Floyd, an eight-foot par putt to retain the lead. Talk about pressure. It's not to be. It's all square with one hole left to play. Raymond has let a five-shot lead slip away. And is Faldo aware of it? As I think I was walking up the fairway, I heard a lot of moans and groans that, that, that Ray had hit a, had done something on 17. It wasn't the normal cheer or whatever. As I almost got to the ball, Fanny said to me, he's, uh, he's gone to 10. So it was sort of a case, come on, just, you don't have to hold it. She said, just, just get it down there. And uh, yeah, I think that it was, it was just a real feel part from the back of that green. It's very difficult. Back on the 18th tee. With the driver. But it's let him down. He's pulled it off to the left and into the fairway bunker. The last thing that he wanted to do. But remember two years ago, Sandy Lyle made birdie from the same bunker to win the 1988 Masters. On the green, Faldo for birdie. Still 10 under. But a par at this point looks very good with Floyd in the fairway bunker. Nicholas now going for a birdie finish. Something he's famous for. Nope, it's going to be wide and a little long, so he still has some work to do. And now as Jack approaches it, Ray Floyd is looking at his situation in the bunker at 18 for par. And Jack finishes with a 285 total. That sets a Masters record for the lowest finish for a senior player, breaking Sam Snead's 1974 mark of 286 by one stroke. Faldo. This for a 10 under par finish. Very firm right in the back of the hole. So after starting with a double bogey on the first hole, Faldo shoots a final round 69, a great performance by the defending champion. And now all he has to do is sweat out Ray Floyd. And that's not going to be easy. Raymond in the sand, 170 yards from the pin. Nope, it's heading toward the right bunker. And in it goes. He'd have to hole out from there to win. And he has to get down in two to tie. It's an agonizing time for Faldo. I peeped around the corner and saw him in the bunker. But, you know, in an intense situation like that, you, you know, a player like that, he's only thinking of the positive things. You know he's going to get it up and down. Of course, if Floyd holds it, it's all over. Oh, it's a fine shot, though. Just an excellent shot under great pressure. He puts that in, and we go to sudden death.
Houston will putt first. And with a par on the final hole, he finishes with five under, which ties him with Lanny Watkins for third. A fine finish in his first Masters. Yeah. And he does it. And that gutsy par means that for the fifth time, the Masters will have a sudden death playoff, which starts at the 10th hole. Can Floyd at 47 become the oldest player to win the green jacket? Or can Faldo, 32, become only the second back-to-back -back Masters champion? The 10th hole at 485 yards is the longest par four in major championship history. And as you can see, only 26 birdies have been made on it all week. Nick Faldo will play his second shot first. Amazingly, uh, Raymond out hit him on this hole from the tee, but oh, drops into the bunker. And now Floyd with a seven iron. He's parred this hole three times and birdied it once. Oh, looks like a good shot. Up it comes. And it's below the hole where you should be, just about 15 feet. That for a birdie. Advantage definitely in Raymond's favor. And Faldo has his work cut out for him. Ray's in perfect shape, hits a good shot, and I'm thinking, oh, well, that's it now, really. So I thought it flashed through my mind, you know, uh, after what we, you know, how am I going to present him with the jacket after, you know, what we've been through? I think that's going to be tough. And I got down to the, to the bunk and I walked up and I felt all right. And I thought, well, okay, come on, you just got to stick in there. I said, come on, stick it close this time. Oh, what a shot. Look at this. Faldo has recovered from the bunker. He's only about four feet from the pin. It's probably totally wrong, but I seem to get that little impression. Maybe that surprised him. And now he's got to... Again, at least I got it inside him, and now he's facing the putt to win, which is always a difficult situation. Ray Floyd is 15 feet from his second green jacket. Oh, and Faldo sighs relief as Ray Floyd gets his par on this first playoff hole, and now Faldo has a tricky four-footer to stay in it. I'm thinking, gosh, you know, I wonder if all the gremlins up in the trees are going to get their own back after what happened to Scott the year before. And I thought, come on, no, just be positive and bang, hold him. Yeah! And then when I went to 11, now I've got this, the same sort, of, same sort of feelings. I'm wondering, uh, you know, is this hole going to get its own back on me from last year? Or, and then I said, no, maybe this is my hole. Maybe this is it. And, uh, and my emotions were chopping and changing all, of, all the time going down that hole. 11th tee, the beginning of Amen Corner, and this time Faldo's outdriven the American. This week, as you can see, the hole has yielded just 25 birdies. And oddly enough, Chris, three of the four previous sudden death playoffs have been decided on this hole, number 11. Raymond's the first to hit from the middle of the fairway, and he has a seven iron. Oh, looks like he's pulled it. He has pulled it. It's going left. Look out. And it goes in the water. Disaster strikes Raymond Floyd. He can't believe it. And I remember looking up and seeing the ball starting to turn. And I said, and I sort of said to myself, oh, my God, you know, you know what has he done? And I couldn't believe it sort of feeling. I was almost in semi-shock as, as he was. And so now I looked at it and I thought, come on, you've still got to make four. This, this doesn't mean... It's yours. And that puts even more pressure on the defending champion. Hitting an eight iron, just wanting to get it on the green. Looks good. And he's on the putting surface. I felt, 
in control, but then you throw it back to Ray and you think, gosh, you know, is he going to chip in? Or if he whips it in really close, I've still got to two part to win. The only chance Raymond has is to hold this out. And it's not going to happen. And a sad moment in Raymond's life. Obviously, when he you know, left a, you know, almost the same as me, a 15 foot as well, that was it. I thought, guys, just two putt it, and it's yours. Just two putt it, and it's yours. What a wonderful thought. And at the same time, what a disheartening thought for Raymond Floyd at the sunset of his golfing career just slides by. But it's good enough for victory. And congratulations from Raymond Floyd. Faldo at the pinnacle of his career. He won the title which started him on his quest for fame and fortune. I had a dream that I'd birdie the last four. You <laughs> dreamed <laughs> I dreamt I'd birdie the last four. When I birdied, you know, starting with fifth, when I birdied uh, 15 and 16 and I had a chance on 17, I thought, you know, it's all going to come true. And then Ray opened the door for me and uh, you know, even, even trying to hit it on the green when you know you've just got to make four is still scary. <laughs> Believe me, it's the most devastating thing that's happened to me in my career at any time. I've had a lot of losses, but there's none of them affected me like this. I tried to say that earlier. Sadly, there has to be a loser. But today, Nick Faldo, who won the British Open in 1987, and now the Masters twice, has proved conclusively he has the class, the skill, the nerve, and the determination required of all great champions. He's earned his green jacket and his place in Masters history. And yes, he'll feel at home in the Masters locker room next year. Well, the nicest thing I, I feel is, you know, I really feel as if I'm now part of this, uh, of this club. Uh, you know, when you win it first time, like whenever you do anything first time, people say, well, that was great, but maybe you did this and got a little lucky here and this sort of thing. But when you're able to do it a second time, it sort of stamps a little bit more authority to it. It's just an incredible feeling. <laughs>